What exactly is adjustable suture strabismus surgery? I'm going to answer that question in this video. Keep watching. I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist, fellowship trained in strabismus surgery. And on this channel, we talk about eye surgery, eye health, a little bit about eye makeup health, and my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, follow along button. All right. We are talking about strabismus surgery. If you don't know, strabismus is the term used to describe conditions when your eye is not straight. So when your two eyes are not pointing in the same direction. Sometimes people have eyes that cross in, which is called esotropia. Eyes can wander out, which is called exotropia. And eyes can even be vertically misaligned, which one eye is higher or lower than the other, called a hypertropia or a hypotropia. All of those different kinds of tropia are called strabismus, which just means misalignment of the eyes. So for certain individuals, I recommend strabismus surgery, which is surgery to make the eyes work together better. In this country, in the US, it is covered by 99% of medical insurances, whether you are a child or an adult. So if I can get that number one point across, I'd be really, really happy because unfortunately, a lot of doctors don't tell people about this surgery. Why? I have no idea. I think they just need to be educated that it is covered. It's not a cosmetic procedure. And sometimes if you go to your eye doctor, maybe they're so concerned about what's going on in your retina or your macular degeneration, they don't realize your eyes are not aligned up. And it's a problem because for some people, when they have strabismus, they have double vision, especially if you're an adult and you've developed it later in life. What are reasons to develop strabismus later in life? Well, some people had it when they were young and they could control it. So it was intermittent, not occurring all the time. But as you get older, you lose that ability to control the eyes and they start doing the things that they've always wanted to do without repercussions. So they start crossing in more or wandering out. For others, it can be because of a little stroke in the eye called a palsy, a cranial nerve palsy, where it affects the muscles to the eye. Cranial nerve three palsy, cranial nerve four, or palsy and cranial nerve six palsy, trochlear, ocular motor, and the abducens nerve all can cause strabismus if that happens. Now, just like little TIAs that can happen in your brain, a lot of times these nerve palsies, they get better on their own. So we don't operate typically unless it's been six months of having eye crossing or eye wandering from the nerve palsy. I will never offer surgery to anybody below six months if they've had this condition. Nerve palsies are usually caused by diabetes, high blood pressure, and there's a lot of different reasons that cause it. Another really common condition for adults is thyroid eye disease. So if you're elevated thyroid, you have something called Graves disease, it's really common to have strabismus. In fact, that's probably what I operate on the most is thyroid ophthalmopathy. But kids get this too, and kids sometimes are born with it, sometimes it develops later in childhood, sometimes it runs in families. Problem when kids have it is that their brain starts to shut the eye off. So sometimes the vision can decrease as a result of this. But today I'm talking about adjustable strabismus surgery. Typically, I do not do this technique on young children. I do it in teenagers and adults. And the reason for that is you are awake during this part of the procedure. So when I am doing strabismus surgery, when most of us do strabismus surgery, you are completely sleeping. It is general anesthesia, tube down your throat, and we are operating on the eye muscles. The reason that we recommend general anesthesia is because this type of muscle movement, when we are moving the muscles of your eyes, it can be really painful. It seems crazy that we can operate on the inside of the eye, like LASIK or cataract surgery, and that's just local anesthesia, but this really does require general anesthesia. But because it's general anesthesia, I can't tell if the eyes are straight after surgery. And the reason for that is everybody's eyes wander out a little bit when they are asleep especially even under anesthesia. And for adults who might have double vision from their strabismus, I want to make sure that the post-operative result is as perfect as possible. I want everybody seeing single after their surgery. So what we do is we put the muscle on a slip knot and I'm going to explain with a little model right here. So that's what we're doing when you're in the recovery room. So you'll wake up in the recovery room, you'll have these stitches that can actually be manipulated and then your surgeon will ask you to look at the distance, look up close, and we'll do 
do the cover uncover test, which is to see if there's still any deviation of the eyes. You'll tell your surgeon if you're still experiencing double vision. Sometimes it's really normal to have double vision for a couple days or even a couple weeks even when the eyes are straight. And that's because your brain needs time to adapt to the new alignment. But if your surgeon measures that there is still some eye crossing or there's still some residual eye wandering, they might want to then adjust the eye muscle. They'll lay you back down in the bed. They do it right there in the post-op recovery room. It's really pretty amazing. Very little risk of infection. And we move that stitch, that slip knot, and we can adjust it. Either pull it up so that it has more of an effect or pull it down so that the weakening procedure is less. This can be done on any muscle that you have, the horizontal muscles or the vertical muscles, medial, lateral, superior, or inferior rectus muscles. Those are the four muscles that we typically do adjustable suture surgery on. It's not scary, it's not painful, but it is weird. So I've done kids as young as 13, and usually I just talk them through the entire procedure. And I think that's, it's just more that it seems really strange because you know what what we're doing and you're looking up and you see me just like this right there like really 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 close doing that actually you probably don't even see it because I'm shining a bright light in your eyes so you can't see too much of anything but you're aware we give you a numbing eye drop and you're aware of what we're doing but it doesn't typically hurt if it does we give you another numbing drop and it's better but you'll feel a pulling or tugging sensation but no actual pain and then we sit you back up and we do the measurements again and we make sure we've got it right I love adjustable suture surgery because it gives us wiggle room. It allows us to fine tune the surgery when you're awake to ensure we get the most optimal result possible. That being said, when they have done studies in the past, adjustable sutures type of strabismus surgery versus strabismus surgeons who don't do the slip knot technique, so far they haven't found any difference in post-operative results, which is interesting. There were some flaws in the way those studies were done, so I don't necessarily take everything that comes out of those studies to heart. But in my hands, I've seen it really greatly improve the post-operative results. I've seen people have single vision right after, and it's really wonderful to know that I can change things if I overshot or undershot on the correction of the surgery. Do you have strabismus surgery planned? Is your surgeon planning on using adjustable suture technique? It's fine if they aren't. If they are used to not doing it, do not insist that they do it. Like I said, the studies haven't shown that there's a great effect one way or the other. I personally prefer it, but let your surgeon do what they want to do. I think it's a neat technique though, and if likely if you've stumbled on this video, your surgeon recommended it. So I'd love to hear how that surgery was for you. Drop it in the comment below. I know the strabismus community is really tight and it just helped for other people to know what you've gone through as well. If you've got topics you would like for me to discuss, I'd love to hear them as well. Drop those in the comments below. I read every single one. And again, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.